Right, so the second video here now, we're basically going to be talking about the actual problems that we have when we're using hash tables, okay? So, what are the limitations of a hash table and how do we get around these? Now, if we look at that basic algorithm for storing data, basically the address was returned from the uh, hash function and then we're going to store the data at that address. Now, this was the modulo function that we were using to actually hash, uh, to generate a hash, okay, of uh, the key field. So, if we were going to try some values of the key fields when p was equal to 13, basically if my key field was 0, I get an address of 0, 1 was giving me an address of 1, 4 giving me an address of 4, 12 giving me an address of 12, all right? When key field becomes 13, my address becomes 0. When 14, I get an address of 1, 15, I get an address of 2, 25 gives me an address of 12, then 26 gives me an address of 0 again, etc., etc. Okay, so you can start to see what some of the problems might be with this, okay? These are what we call buckets, all right? So basically, when we have um, particular data and when we try to generate a hash on that, it's going to fall into a particular bucket, right? Now, if you think about what the, uh, what the features of a good hash algorithm were, what we want to avoid are these collisions where data ends up in the same bucket. All right, we want we will actually want to end up with B, where we have a uniform spread across the problem space because we're not ending up with all these kinds of collisions. So this is a very real problem. All right, basically you can see that anywhere where we had uh, a common factor, all right, uh, with the number of buckets, then uh, the hash that's generated is going to be a multiple of that number of buckets. All right. So instead of getting that uniform spread, uh, the data is going to end up clustering in one area. How do you avoid doing that, uh, avoiding this problem, all right? Well, the easiest way to do it is to, uh, to solve the problem is by reducing the number of factors, basically. And one way of reducing the factors is by using a number uh, as, as in your mod modulus function that uh, doesn't have many factors, which is basically means using a prime number, okay? Now, um, Another way that some um, uh, uh, algorithms uh, will talk about doing this is basically using the, the prime number is the size of the actual array itself, okay? So that way you end up with a unique address every time, okay? The problem is when you don't know enough about the key, all right, uh, then you, you know you have to kind of like hazard a guess, all right? Now... How do we actually handle storing data in a hash table then? So if I've got a really simple uh, table over here, got eight elements in it, I've got a hash function where my mod I'm gonna be using five as my prime number in my modulo function when I generate my hash. So obviously zero is gonna give me an address of zero. Okay, two is gonna give me an address of two. This time when I try to hash five, five modulo five gives me a remainder of zero. So basically I've now got a collision all right, I can't store data in that location. So what my algorithm needs to be able to do then basically is to start moving through the um, the array until it finds an empty slot, at which point we can then store the data. Okay, so I start moving down through the array, find an empty slot, and I'm going to store the data in that uh, element over there. Okay, so what is my, my, so this is the algorithm that I was uh, talking about in the previous video about uh, storing data. Now we're going to extend it, okay? So the address is going to be equal to a hash of the key field. We generate the address using that hash function, okay? While the address is not empty, we need to keep going to the next address. And then once we get to an empty place, we insert the data at that address, all right? Now, um, if you look at that and you're, you, some of you may spot straight away, okay, what happens if you hit the end of the, the array, okay? And so you can actually extend that condition and you can build in some error um, some further error checking, all right? Uh, same again, the unfished algorithm for retrieving data. The overly simplistic version from the previous video basically was that we run a hash on a key field, give us the address, we're going to go to that address and we should be able to retrieve that data. But as we've seen, when we had a hash of five, uh, we went to the same address as we would with a hash of zero uh, and therefore we uh, end up with a collision, okay? So similarly, all right, obviously with zero, I'm going to find my data at zero. When I hash two, I'm going to find the data at two. But when I hash five, I'm not going to find it. So I'm going to keep going through my array, all right, until I actually find a matching key field, all right, at which point 
I say, yep, I've got my data and that's returned back out to me. All right. So the, that algorithm for retrieving data, if the address is the address is equal to hash of the key field, all right, while the address is not empty, we're going to keep going to the next address. However, if all of a sudden the key equals the criteria that we're finding in that element down there, then basically we found the matching key field so we can return any associated data that's being stored down there. All right. Otherwise, we're going to hit the end of the uh, array. OK, and we need to return not found. And so uh, some of you may have spotted that obviously the condition over here, there needs to be an and inside my um, my condition uh, for the reaching the end of the array. All right. So if you are in my class, this is the bit where you hit pause. All right. This is one way to do before next lesson. You have a go at trying to code this and you bring it to the lesson. If you don't, you're dead meat. All right. Uh, now, basically, if you want to pass the limitations of a hash table, remember that a good hash algorithm is going to generate very different hashes from similar inputs. Right. And there are different techniques for hashing mod using modulus is obviously like the simplest version thing that we can do. All right. However, if you remember that we want to kind of generate, uh, we want to have low collisions. All right. By um, making sure that we have data stored in unique addresses. And then by doing that, we uh, have got a uniform spread across the problem space. And one way of doing that is to make sure that we're using prime numbers with reduced factors. So that way we're not clustering the data in certain parts of the array. All right. And obviously, the larger the prime, the less uh, clustering that is going to be taking place. So you should now know what the limitations of a hash table are and how we're going to get around these. Uh, thank you very much.